Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be looking at different approaches to managing state in React. So we're going to be using a very simple application uh, and I thought we'd try um, yeah, adding basically state management in a few different ways and just, just have a look at the, the differences in terms of you know syntax, simplicity, uh, kind of readability and maybe uh, also performance as well, seeing what kind of uh, performance hit there is. So we'll be looking at just straight up props, props drilling, uh, context, React context, and then a couple of third-party libraries, so Redux, which is probably one of the more popular ones, and um, a newly introduced one called Recoil, which isn't in production yet, or production ready, uh, I should say, but um, yeah, it's looking very good. I've done a tutorial on that for beginners if you want to check it out. Um, so yeah, so this is the, the app that we have, a um, very simple app. We've got the nav and the body, we've got a couple of components, which will hopefully um, show the, the total number of likes and the top movie. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of components. Uh, so this is generally what it looks like. And the idea of course is that we could have a huge number of components. Um, so we kind of want this to be somewhat performant and we'll see what I mean by that uh, when we get into the code. Um, so the format of this is, I start off with um, this example, which is hasn't yet implemented um, the kind of the top two features because um, the state is kept locally or managed locally within the component. Uh, and this is again for performance reasons. So this is where the, the issue of essentially state management comes in. Um, and then I've added another commit or a second commit uh, to solve the the issue of state management with context pros recall with each of the different approaches. So we can kind of do a bit of a uh, code review session to look at the differences. So let's start off with the um, the basic application here. Uh, so we've got the hard-coded movie list, and this is just kind of uh, keep our default state. Um, we've got the app itself, like I said, the nav and the, the body. Right now, the navigation is just um, it's hard-coding a single movie. So this is, you know, we need access to some sort of list of movies. Um, it's calculating the, the top name and the, and the total likes, which, uh, of course, is going to be zero on you know, hard-coding, and then it's just passing them through to the, the components. Um, the body just renders uh, a movies component. The movies component has got a list of IDs uh, and it passes it down to the movie component, which renders the actual movie. And the reason it's got the IDs here and I've passed that down again is so that uh, we don't have to re-render um, every movie each time we uh, update one of these, right? So let's see what that looks like. Uh, so if I just add a render here, actually. so. The idea here is that we you know, click up or down, thumbs up, thumbs down, and it will update. And if we look at the log here, we can see that every time we update one of these, um, it's only going to update that one component. So ignore the double render, I think that's a, that's a development, development bug, but you can see that as we're updating one of these, it's only updating the single movie. Uh, but obviously, the issue here is that the, um, the state of the movie is kept within the movie component, right? So there's no way for the other components in the tree to, to access that. So yeah, let's look how we solve that. Um, so in the second commit, we'll, we'll start off with props. Cool. Also, I'll add a link to the repo in, uh, in the description if you want to have a look at, at it yourself. So first, we're going to be looking at props. We can see that what we've done is essentially taking the uh, state of the movies and we've listed all the way up to the app. Um, so we've got the entire entire movies list here. Uh, we've added function to update the likes for a specific movie. So we pass an ID, um, in this case a value, uh, and then um, we just wrap that in a, a like and a dislike function. Um, and then we pass the movies and the like and dislike functions down the down the tree, right? So the nav bar takes in the movies, uh, and essentially that solves solves it there because we've really got the functions to, to calculate the um, the totals. Uh, and then the for the main content, we can see we're passing in, you know, the functions, the movies all the way down. Um, and in the movies component, we we still got the IDs here. Um, we're just selecting the uh, movie based off of the ID. In this case, I've, I've kept the ID and the index the same, so that's why we can just do this. Uh, and we're passing in the like and the dislike. So the actual movie component um, no longer handles its own state, just takes in state as a prop uh, and it renders it. So if we just update, uh, yep. So if we just update to the 
uh, props uh, and we can go in here so we can see that this is all uh, working fine so I think I've got the render here in the props renders everything um, and if we click on up and down you can see the total likes here yeah it's gone up to two if we go up here Godfather so that's updating us that's fine but what you will notice at the bottom is every time we update one of these uh, we're rendering the entire movies list which is not not ideal so that's something we probably want to look at and I'm not going to solve that here uh, because uh, I'm going to solve it in the context version so they're very similar but basically we can wrap some of the components or the, the functions in um, react memo or use callback hooks um, and that will essentially cache uh, the component if it receives you know the same prop so it can uh, it will only update the individual movie so we'll move on to that in a moment but yeah you can see how this is quite a nice simple solution but again if your component tree is getting quite big uh, this might this might become a bit bit of a bit of a pain it adds a lot of kind of boilerplate code um, so you can see where this might start to break down if your app is getting getting bigger cool so let's move on to context um, and we'll have a look at context here the context looks very similar to, to props so the very first thing we do is we create uh, context using react um, create context uh, and what that gives you within this with this this movie context is that provider essentially and a, and a consumer right so um, what you do here typically is you wrap some sort of some number of components in a provider and every component within that provider has access um, via the consumer to some you know to some value right so what that looks like here is we've got this movie provider component and all this does is it takes uh, the movie context dot provider which is the provider we're talking about um, a given value in our case this is exactly the same as we had what we had in the app so the movies the, the update functions so we're just passing that as an array um, so we can destructure it easily later and then we just um, yeah we just pass in or we just render all the children so what this means is in all these children uh, we can access access the uh, the value so in the app we've wrapped that in movie provider and then in the nav bar we now can just use this uh, use context hook we pass in the movie context and we just destructure the movies out there that's that's it done and in the movies um, we can destructure the movies like and dislike function and we pass them in just like we've seen before to the um, to the movie to the movie component now if we have a quick look at this one and again we've got the uh, console.log in here and actually what I'm going to do is I think I've still got memo from earlier on so let me just remove these guys just so we can have a quick look at what it does before it's optimized so we can see that uh, on first load it's um, rendering every movie which is exactly what we'd expect and as we increase or decrease the likes we can again see that it's re-rendering the entire entire movie uh, the entire tree essentially but in this case all the movies um, which is not what we want and you would have just seen there a couple of minutes ago or a few seconds ago actually that there, there is a way to get around this which is um, using react memo and use callback so what we had here is and I'm just going to undo these so it might be easier than typing it all out we can wrap our movie component in memo so what that's basically saying is if we see this exact same component again or get these inputs then we know it's going to be the same one so you can essentially it caches it so it doesn't need to re-render um, which by itself is fine because uh, it's going to get the same movie um, other than the one that's changed but in the provider the like and dislike um, we're being recreated every time so every time the movie changes it's going to recreate a like and a dislike function and passes that in so it's a different function so the, the memo doesn't quite work so we can write these in a use callback um, in this case it's got no actually should have or could have update likes and dependency um, this just depends on set movies which never changes so I've just left that out um, but yeah so that basically caches these functions pass it down and you can see that now as we like and dislike each of these, it's only going to re-render the um, 
specific movie that we're we're touching. And again, we could do some other things to, to up here, but we're we're going to mainly focus on the um, the movies here. Yeah, that's context. Um, I think context is probably a nicer step from from props, especially if you've got you know your tree starting to get a bit bigger, so you don't want to pass it through all the um, all the components. Um, and I think uh, at a certain point when your state starts to get quite complicated, there's a lot of writes and reads, or there's a lot of kind of changing and moving state. Um, I think it's reasonable to start to consider a third party library. I think you can get quite far with context, but uh, typically, yeah, when it starts to get a bit larger, I start to look at something like Redux. Um, so let's let's move on to, to Redux next. Cool, so I'm just going to go to Index and make sure we've got Redux. And let's have a oops. Let's have a look at the changes that are involved in Redux. Cool. So here I'm using React Redux and Redux Toolkit. So one of the things that a lot of people might say uh, about Redux is it's got a fair bit of uh, boilerplate, especially when you're kind of starting out. Um, but uh, Toolkit helps a lot with those uh, with that boilerplate, um, mainly through I guess this function here, create slice, um, and there, there's a few other functions that help out a lot. So this is quite nice. Um, in this one function, we're just giving it a name, we're defining the um, initial state, which is again our, our movies list, and then a couple of reducers. Um, and what the create slice does is it takes each key for our reducer and it turns that into an action. So create slice returns actions and reducers, and within those actions we have uh, an action for each of these keys, so like and dislike. So when we dispatch these actions, then it's just gonna um, it's gonna run these uh, yeah the reducer here. And the other thing you might notice is it looks here like we're looks like we're mutating state, uh, but Redux is shipped with uh, a library called Immer, which uh, basically allows you to do things like this. It allows you to um, seem like you're modifying or mutating state but actually behind the scenes Immer is mutating it for you or updating it for you in an, in an immutable way so that kind of makes it um, makes it look quite simple right so we're just incrementing or decrementing the, the likes here so we're configuring the store um, with a reducer um, and then we're mapping our state so again if you're familiar with Redux you'll know um, you need to map the state to props um, so that they can be passed into the um, into the component through the connect method so that's what we're doing here so we're doing one for movie the the movie component which is just taking the state which is the list of movies and we're just taking we're, we're getting the props which is just an id and we're just saying all right for uh, for this state just return me the the movie that we that we need and then for the the nav bar we're just taking the entire state and we're just um, applying the the reduce on those two to get the uh, the likes and the name and the rest of it is very similar to the others. So we can see a provider wrapped around the entire app, and this um, this has a store, so we can uh, so we can access that from within any component. Um, the nav bar now takes in the um, the name and the likes as uh, props, and we have the connect function uh, with the that maps the state to these two props here. So those those just get passed in directly, and we do the exact same for uh, the movie, yeah. So the movie, um, and we can move this across. It might be better to look at this here. So the movies hasn't changed from the original uh, app.js way. So it's still got the list of IDs, still passing in the IDs. But you can see this has now been updated here, the movie component, um, to take in the map state and map dispatch. Um, and then it uses that ID to get the, the movie and passes them in as props. And the cool thing with this, if we run this one, is that it's already optimized straight away. So the connect function here um, does some kind of pre-optimization similar to what we've, I think, done in, um, in the context where it kind of uh, memoizes uh, the component. So basically it gives you it out the box and we don't need to do anything there. So you can see how that could be quite quite useful. And the like and dislike function here, um, because we're getting it through the map dispatch, it's just automatically uh, dispatching that for us. And we're obviously passing in the ID to get the, uh, or to target the specific uh, movie. So yeah, that's Redux, um, quite nice. 
with the um, the toolkit. Without that, I think it, yeah, I agree, it can be quite quite verbose. So yeah, um, yeah, let's move on to the final one, which is recoil. Um, there we go. So this is recoil, and you can see that at the top here we're defining um, an atom and a couple of selectors. So the atom here is um, we're atom a function. So it's a function that takes an ID of a movie and it gives you back uh, an atom um, for that ID. And the default here is, or the default state is uh, the movie in the list. So you can see here straight away that it's actually, we've got quite a powerful concept here in which we're creating atoms um, on the fly here. Um, and then we have a couple of selectors and in the selector here we have access to uh, existing atoms. So we're um, taking the movie IDs uh, and we're iterating or ma mapping them and we're getting the movie to, to get all the movies and then we're just doing the reduce on that. So we've moved the, the calculation up here. And I could have easily moved these out also into um, their own selectors of their own atoms. So you know, movie IDs and movies instead of duplication, but I'm just trying to keep it simple. Also note with this, typically we wrap this round in a memoirs function so that we can get the same atom for the ID every time. Um, so yeah, we could have, or we should have, maybe should have done that. So we wrap the app round in recall root to give access to all the components to the atoms and selectors. Um, yeah, and the rest of the changes is just directly to the components that access the state themselves. So the, the movie name, the likes, just call the selectors directly. So recall value and pass in the selectors. And then the movie ID here at the bottom, um, we just change the use state to recall state and we've got this function, uh, the movie with ID, which returns the atom with that ID. So no other changes there. So that's quite, quite minimal. Um, and you can see if we like or dislike any of these movies, you can see it's only rendering these items once. And that's of course because the movie component itself is creating the state. And I quite like the API of recall state it feels very much like we're just using straight up React state, which is quite nice. Yeah, and I think it's probably one to watch um, as it reaches a bit more maturity or kind of gets to, to be in production ready. Uh, I think it could be one for, for, for the future. So yeah, I think that's, uh, that's generally it. Um, my general rule of thumb in terms of which one you should use um, is basically start off at the left here. Right, so start off if your app is very small, then you don't need to, to reach for any solutions. Um, probably you can get quite far with essentially prop drilling, passing down props or passing down components themselves with values. Um, if your component tree starts to get you know quite big and there's kind of um, state that needs shared across lots of you know different components are starting to grow a bit messy then of course um, you can maybe have a look at context um, and in my head if the state starts to get a bit more complicated or if you're updating or you know changing the state quite a lot then it might be worth looking at a third party um, and there's you know there's lots of the ones to consider the redux just happens to be the one that i'm familiar with um, and it's been quite quite good so yeah that's it so um yeah let me know what you think uh, i thought this was quite quite fun um, hopefully it's kind of useful to to some of you and yeah have a good day thanks for watching